Scott Records was made a Grandmaster Flash doing a quick mix for Super Sperm. Super Sperm, Super Sperm, Soup, Soup, Soup. And I was like, I want to do that. And then Rappers of Light came out. That was cool because everybody wanted to recite Rappers of Light. Then I heard Super Rapid with the Grandmaster Flash guy I just heard on a tape. But now he got five MCs. And I heard Melly Mel and Mr. Ness, Scorpio, before he, before he was uh, Scorpio, he was Mr. Ness, uh, Kid Creole, Raheem, and Keith Cowboy. I heard the five MCs. And Rappers of Light and um, Super Rapid was out. When I got into high school, I, I grew up in Hollis, Queens, New York, but I went to school in Harlem, and I went to Rice High School. When I got to Rice High School, uh, you know, rap records was out, you had the weekend radio shows, but when I got to Rice, I was getting all these cassette tapes of the live performances of Grandmaster Flash and Africa Bambada and a Cold Crush and Mo D when he was with the Treacherous Three before rap records was even made. And what they were doing at those, you know, at Harlem World and at T Connection and at Celebrity Club, what they were doing, you know, when Africa Memoir played in the park in the street. When I heard that, and then I got a chance to get on the microphone, I said, that thing that they were doing before we was being recorded is the eternal, it's the foundation, it's the heartbeat. It's the blood, it's the brains, it's the life of our whole culture. I said, as long as you do the truth of your art, you will be invincible and unstoppable. And that's one of the things that I learned, because old school is not a time period. Old school is a consciousness, a way of creatively, artistically presenting who you are if it's through a rap, if it's through music, if it's through the way you dress, yeah. through how you dance, spinning on your head, or how you write on the wall. That being said, everything that I did at every level of my career always starts from when I was 12 years old and first heard Melly Mel and MoD and Grandmaster Flash. You know? I was just telling some young people last week. You know, DLC, listen to this and critique it, and I'm telling them the truth. I said, first of all, before I do that, I don't want you thinking I'm hating. <laughs> when I judge something, I judge it from my time span of 12 to 18 years old. I just want to let you know that. Now play your music. So for me, if I always do what I was doing when I first wrote my rhymes, when I first you know, wanted to write a song or when I first wanted to do a presentation, what is old to me will always be new eternally because nobody does what I do the way I do it. Of course. Sense to you. Like, when I do a show now, I did a show recently and this was, and it was really good because I got feedback from people from my culture. But the young dude said, yo, DMC, the young dudes don't put it down like you do. And then people from my era, you know what I'm saying, from like, let's say, you know, 40 to 60 years old, they said this to me. They said, DMC, I came in to see you. I thought I was going to see some old school, old man rap BS. But yo, you were impressed. You know what I'm saying? That's because, you know, when the Cold Crush or when the Furious Five or when Run DMC performed in 85 and, you know, we came out with uh, Jam Master J and Suck MCs, when we show up in 86, we got to have Harry go on Rockbox for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, that being said, there was always, um, I always tell people, hip-hop will exist, the hip-hop that exists forever will always have evolution and um, will always rise because you got to be innovative in your presentation. You know what I'm saying? When I do Suck and Seize now, I'm not going to do it the way that I did it in 84 with Run. Yeah. No, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to throw a guitar riff up on there, and I'm going to switch up the lyrics to tell you. I never, even now... If I do a record from the past, I don't do it like it's from back in the day. I always do it in present tense. So that being said, if you do what you do from the perspective of when you first started doing it, it will always evolve because then it's always true. Yeah. Truth is always new and everlasting. And it's 
real talk, and it's real talk. And, and if you look at what you guys built, and like you said, the guys before you, you know, uh, Melly Mel, Grandmaster Flash, all them cats, Grandmaster Kaz. I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, if you look at all those guys and, and yourself and, and Jam Master J and Run, how do you feel about what what's happening today? I I almost feel like people are taking the building blocks. Out of the foundation of hip hop, it's almost oh, a yes. desecration. It's all gone. It is all gone. And I was just talking to somebody about that. When you now, that means that we get respect. We get respect, but we are not allowed to participate. You know what I'm saying? And that is the disrespect or the disconnect. Um, there's not a generation gap between the old school and this new generation or even the generation before us. Like right? another genre. It's an information gap. Yeah. I'm saying it's an information gap. And when you remove the builder blocks and the foundation, everything stops growing, it becomes stagnant and monotonous. And what I mean by that is, when you sit down and you speak to Mick Jagger and Keith Richards, or you speak to Stephen Tyler and Joe Perry, or you speak to Eric Clapton, and you come there to do an interview with them, they're not going to sit there and talk about themselves. They're going to talk about all the black blues artists that influenced them. Yeah. You sit down and speak with Led Zeppelin, they ain't going to sit there and talk about how great I'm... Um, I do interviews globally. Every time I go overseas to Germany, especially the UK, they say this to me. Yo, DMC, you and Grandmaster Flash are the only two people that talk about 70s hip-hop. Because most people talk about the hip-hop that started when it was recorded. Stuff that run. You know, people say, I know y'all didn't create it, but y'all created it. It started with y'all. No, it didn't. See, the problem is nobody ever heard, and no, not even that. Yeah, they haven't heard it, but nobody knows Melly Mel, Moji, and Cash rhyme like me and Run. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fresh never had successful records. Melly Mel was, like, the message just was out of this stratosphere. Rolling Stone magazine got it right. I talked to people all over the globe. The best rap record, hip, I'm talking about record. The best recorded rap song is the fucking message, hands down. I don't care, Jay-Z, DMC, uh, Eminem, no. The best presentation of our music was, it's like a jungle satan that makes me wonder how I care. Standing on the front roof, staring at me. Hell yeah, that was the shit. The That's the best recorded rap. I'm not talking about the best rap. I'm talking about the best rap record ever is the message. Hands down. Second best is Planet Rock, because that shit was out of the stratosphere. Excuse me, my name. But that being said, People haven't never heard Melly Mel rhyme like me and run. People say, yeah, because y'all switched off. The Furious Five did that. You know what I'm saying? Even on Freedom. You know what I'm saying? If you listen to Super Rap and started, it was a party night. Everybody was breaking. The highs was screaming and the bass was shaking. And it was a beat on tell everybody knowing that flash it. Nobody in the game to this day does that. Now, you look at it in this, this day. They're, because they removed the foundation and the building blocks, not even as a guideline, you're supposed to listen to what we did and say, I gotta be better than that. You know what I'm saying? Because you had the message, you had Planet Rock, you had Rockbox, you had um, I Need Love, you had Fight the Power, you had um, um, Eric B for President, you had De La Soul Three Feet High and Rise, and you had Q-Tip. Every, it would always elevate it because people would look at each other, everybody was doing, I gotta do something better than that. I gotta use a different song. Hip hop now, LL said 15 years ago, hip hop is so corny right now because all the rappers look and sound the same. And when you look at a video and listen to a record, it sounds like the same thing over and over and over. The innovativeness in the attempt uh. to be highly creative in your presentation is missing. Like, uh, Chuck D said this one time. He said, yo, people would look at Rock Kim and go, damn, I can't do that shit. And they couldn't. Nowadays, you know, these rappers will look at young this and little this and little that and go, I could do that. And they do it. But the reason why they could do it, because it's so easy to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yep, yep, yep. Ad libs and choruses. And now, don't get me wrong, I could never critique another person's creativity. But look, and I'm 
not talking because I'm 51 years old. Because I always check everybody, especially these young punks. I go, listen here, man. Look at what your dudes are doing at 21, 18 to 21. I didn't change the world when I turned 45. I changed the world lyrically, artistically, in my previous. I was your age. You know what I'm saying? I was Little Wayne's age. I was Young Thug's age. You know what I'm saying? I was Meagle's age. When I, I, didn't just, I didn't just have videos and I wasn't just on the radio. People, my thing wasn't just impressing my peers that I could spit 16 bars. We had educators and lawmakers and religious folks and the powers that be going, do you hear and see what these young people are doing? And it was good. And when people, when other young people saw me doing good, they took it upon themselves to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to do that with DMC, but I got to do it my way. You know what I'm saying? We, we let people know, you can do this, but do it, be better than me. Bust my ass. Right now, it's like, oh, that's how this record sounds? You know what I'm saying? It's like, if there was a time when it was cool not to have, um, let's say, um, Sierra and Rihanna singing your hooks. And what I mean by that is, as an artist, if I come out right now, I want my music to be different. I want my content, my subject matter to be different. And no, I don't want Rihanna on my hook. I want Melody from Nashville, Tennessee, who lives on fifth block of the sixth ward, who suddenly I heard her sing in the basement. I want her on my record because when it's played on hip hop radio, when the audience hear that, they go, oh, who's that? So now Rihanna got the fear of God in her. She got to go back to the lab and come create what else is over for her. And that's what would happen. We would come out with a record and then LL would drop something to make me and Run J go back in the basement and work this out. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody says, when everybody heard Rebel Without a Pause, you know what I'm saying? Hip hop was this big. Everybody was killing KRS One and DMC and LL and Harry B and Rock Kim. And then Chuck and the Bomb Squad comes. Oh, I remember Keith Shockley, Hank Shockley, and Chuck D chased us to the airport and said, "Oh no! Before you get on the plane, Run DMC and the Beast Boys is going overseas. Take this with y'all." So we get on the plane. I put this in my box. This thing said, Brothers and sisters! Brothers and sisters! I don't know what this world is coming to! Ten, ten, sugar, 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 yes! And that shit said, Wee! The rebel, the rebel! When I went back and ripped up all my rhymes, and that's why I was so dope on Raising Hell. When I heard Rebel Without a Pause, I said, Oh, it all ends here. Let me rework this. And I had to come with Hit It Run and my Peter Piper rhymes. But that was always the influence. Right now, the only thing that's wrong with this generation is everybody can do it. You know what I'm saying? Even in my generation, if we didn't have a lot, so let's say if it was 30 groups out, you had 30 different presentation sounds and representations. Now, the way this industry is, if Run DMC drops Rockbox right now, there's a million rock songs on the radio. You know what I'm saying? And think yeah. about it. This is not against anybody's creativity. Even New York, it sounded like everybody now. You know what I'm saying? Where it used to be, I want my beat different. Let me tell you that, they're talking about drinking. I'm going to make a record about not drinking. But the not drinking record was going to be so dope. You know what I'm saying? So lyrically organized, so arranged, cut scratching, vocals is tight that you would have to play it with the corny pop stuff. And then the corny pop stuff would be overtaken. I love my manager's Eric Bland's brother, Patrice Bland. He says, I'm so tired of this radio. You know, I'm taking my artists in to get these meetings with these labels and these A&Rs and these stupid MFs is asking for a radio record. He said, motherfucker, sucking seeds was a radio record. It was so dope you had to play it. That's missing from us right now. Because think about it. Yeah. Everybody had bass lines and funk and R&B samples. You know, rappers are like, what's good times? Boom, boom, boom. So, you know, James Brown's big beats, everybody was sam West Coast was sampling funk. Yeah. So we came along, we said, hey, nobody's just doing records with just the beat playing. We did a record called Sucker and Seek. Run kick three rhymes. My claim to fame is one rhyme at the end of the record. I'm DMC. And you know what's crazy? When Russell took our records around to every major label here in the city, we all got turned down. And one of the reasons was, ain't nobody.
nobody want to hear a rapper rapping about chicken and St. John's and collard greens. Yeah. That was their thing. No, I want to hear this. Well, you know, where's the message? And where's this? And where's, you know, the sex in them? I'm, I'm DMC. And the place to be, I'll go to St. John's. I mean, it was simple, but it was real. It's what DMC really did. You know what I'm saying? And it made history. That eagerness to be um, innovative and just to be real, to be yourself. You know, nowadays, if I'd have took that there, the DMC sound really good. We like that rhyme, but... Could you be a little more like 50 Cent? You know what I'm saying? I, no. 50 should play. DMC should play. Young Thug should play. Wayne should play. But also Pooba should play. Yeah. Um, a couple of years ago, Grand Pooba put out a solo album. And there's a record. I found it on the internet called I See Dead People. And it made me sit back and say, okay, they're lying. I should sue radio. Because... You go to every state, in every state, um, Clear Channel, and, um, you know, the uh, iHeartRadio, especially the rap stations, you know, Power 108 and Power This and whatever, they go, the station that loves hip-hop. I go, they're lying. I should sue them for first representation. Grand Pooba had a record with him and Lord Jamal and this guy singing called I See Dead People talking about Medgar Evers. It was the dopest lyrics. Go listen to it when you get off this interview with me. It's called I See Dead People, Grand Pooba. It's one of the best rap records I heard in ages. But why don't the children of Chicago and Camden and Compton and all the places where they're shooting and illing and thinking hip-hop is about murder and sex and drugs, why don't the station that loves hip-hop play one of the icons of hip-hop's music, Grand Pooba, who at this stage and age he is, he's better than 99% of all these young dudes on the microphone. I, I agree. Like, they don't believe. You know what I'm saying? I agree, D, I agree with you 100%. There's a rapper out of Houston. He's been rapping 30 years. Never had a mainstream right. deal. His name is K. Reno. This guy lyrically is, is probably one of the best to ever do it. He doesn't get no play at all. Have you ever heard of him? He's phenomenal. Nope. I'm going to go look him up right now and probably fall in love. Hey, Reno, I will go listen to him. But see, that's the problem. Yeah. I'm not just talking. I'm, I hate when people, uh, radio guys, go, oh, okay, we know hip-hop started in New York, but that's not the issue. The issue for New York is this. The New York DJ used to be able to go to Memphis. I yeah. could go to Memphis this weekend. No, I could come and discover K Reno and then come home Monday morning before playlists and program directors and corporate took over and defiled and polluted our culture. I could go discover K Reno, come home, get on my morning show prime time. Yo, this is DJ DMC. Welcome to the station that loves hip hop. Yo, last week I was here and I discovered this guy K Reno. I'm going to play his record. Play K. Reno's record. It's dope. New York is loving him. It's spread from New York to Connecticut, down south, all the way across. That, that can't happen no more because it can't. And that's the problem. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you, your Everybody game is hijacked. Was on, even, even the worst rap record that shouldn't got a deal, that does get a deal and gets played and people like it, that can happen. But the people that like that record, damn sure should hear Pooba and K. Reno, too. Because nine times out of ten, they will say, I've been liking this bullshit song and Puma and K. Reno's here. And that's called the discovery. That's called the evolution. That's called the representation. It's not even about saying, here's the building blocks, you got to do it this way. I don't want nobody to do it my way. I want somebody to come do it their way so I can look at my way, the way they doing it, and then come up with something to bust their ass. But that don't happen no more. Because now... Everybody's rapping and sounding alike. I, yeah, I hate to say, you know, to play the rap game, right? This ain't no fucking game. No. What do you mean a game? You want to play a game? Pull out Monopoly, motherfucker. <laughs> it's, it's a truth, and it's not yeah. about genocide and freedom of speech. Rappers can rap about anything and everything they want, but if you do a record about a gun, the very next record should be about not using a gun. If you tell your story about being a drug dealer, at the end of that record, you should be, but shorty, you shouldn't do this. That used to happen. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Now, the success in hip-hop is judged by this stupid mentality.
mentality of America, the stupid mentality of America is, yo, this negativity stuff in hip hop is cool, it's acceptable because it's making money. No, it's doing genocide to my people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the radio stations, I understand radio stations is in business to get money, but there's a million other ways to get money than the decimation of your young people, Mr. Program Director of Radio Station Winter, I mean, um, Clear Channel, whatever. Or, oh, yo, you don't understand, radio's a game. Yeah, but you don't need all the money in the world at the expense of people's young lives. There's no rappers on the radio saying, school is cool. Yeah. I got a girlfriend. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't, it's, it's nothing wrong if you don't smoke blunt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not for everybody. <laughs> it's not, and, and it's you know. Right. But he, see, that universality representation don't exist no more. Now, yeah. that being said, I don't think we're allowed to be around the current state of hip hop because then that audience discover there's something better. And what I mean by that is, a couple of years ago, I was at a, a a black biker, a black motor, a black biker motorcycle rally. You know, I was one of the highest celebrities to come there and speak to the kids or whatever, whatever. And then, you know, the guy was asked, "We well, oh, DMC, you stay in the night for the show?" I was like, "Oh, there's a show? Yeah, every year, you know, they bring somebody in. Last year was Salt and Pepper. You know, this year is Big Daddy K. Oh, as soon as he said Big Daddy K, oh, I'm there. So I'm standing there, right? And Kane comes out with a DJ, right? DJ scratching, dropping beats. Y'all remember this, this and that. I'm about to bring Kane. Kane comes out. He's really rhyming. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he brings scrap. Uh, he's a uh, scoop lover, a scrap lover. One of them is still with him. He brings him out. Kane can still do all the moves, the split, the flips, all of that. They're doing all that. True story. So I'm standing on the side of the stage. There was a lady next to me. She's about probably um, 45 years old. So I guess her daughter probably was around. Um, 16 or 17 years old, right? The daughter, listen to this. The daughter's going, now Kane is on stage doing what he does, right? It's old to us, but it's new because it's dope. The daughter's going, mommy, mommy, mommy. The daughter says this word. She goes, who is that man and what is he doing because I like that? And all Kane was doing was doing what he's been doing since he was young. And that being said, these young people ain't exposed to a good rap song, a good rap performance, a good MC, a good DJ. You know, a DJ isn't supposed to just stand there and push buttons. You know what I'm saying? Most of these guys now, they got a guy pushing buttons, everything's pre-recorded, this and that. They got dancers and lights and all of that. All run DMC, Jam Master J never, ever used a DAP machine. Jay, if, if it was windy or if it was 100 degrees outside, we in trouble. Because the records is going to melt. The record, if you listen to Run DMC Live at the Funhouse, here we go, the record jumps, but Jay so definitely catches it. Go back and listen to Run DMC Live at the Funhouse, right in the beginning, when it breaks out, DMC, come on everybody, let's all get the record jumps. Jay goes to, we always did this presentation, what, on Adidas, I said what Run DMC really should be famous for doing. You know, it's cool that we was the first to go gold, first to go platinum, first on MTV, first on Rolling Stones, all of that stuff. Cool. But on Adidas, I said what Run DMC really did for the world. We took the beat from the street and we put it on TV. What Run DMC does is what Kaz does, what Daddy Kane does, what P.E. does, what Eminem does, what all we these guys is doing. That's what we put on TV. But we put it on a way where you said you don't have to do it the way we do it. Find your own music. Find your own subject matter. Find your own presentation. Find your own image. Everybody got a dope verse. Everybody got a dope bar. But right now, everybody got the same sound and same record. It's not a problem, but it is. Yeah. And that's how I look at this new generation. Now, it's not going to take me at 50 years to do anything about it. All I can do is just sit here and talk about it in a way that it might inspire the 12 year old kid from Memphis to say, man, I don't have to rhyme like a country bumpkin. I could do my, when me and Run first heard Scarface, we had no idea he was from New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? Mr. Mr. Scarface went up the wall to spout. Everything, they're pre even the Willie D and them. Mom playing tricks on me.